Hi everyone, so I'm Andrew, and uh, if you don't know me, I'm sort of the sciencey guy in my grade, <laughs> along with no, no, but so my talk is about antibiotics, and I know some of you are probably thinking antibiotics just treat bacterial infections, right? Uh, and for that, I would say you are correct, uh, but they also do pose a threat to our society, um, and I'll actually be getting to that later in my talk. But I'd first like to explain how I got into the realm of antibiotics. So I remember as a kid how uh, my dad would, more often than not, use antibiotics for any sort of wound. And, but these weren't like the prescribed antibiotics in their glorified pill form. No, they were the over-the-counter antibiotic cream-like substances, sort of like uh, Neosporin, for example. So I remember this one specific time when I just received a cut and my dad wanted to immediately apply antibiotics, you know, just to prevent it from getting infected. And my sister quickly interjected from another room, saying that if I kept using antibiotics for useless reasons, such as this superficial cut, that it would soon lose effectiveness. And at the time, it made sense to me, and I was convinced. However, my dad, of course, he wasn't, and he said, which basically translates to, there's no harm. Uh, turns out he's wrong, so. Yeah. <laughs> so now, I'm, like I said previously, that antibiotics do treat bacterial infections. I would like to ask you all a question if you know any adverse effects to the use of antibiotics. Right? <laughs> well, if you take them, I mean, they go everywhere in your body, and they kill bad and good bacteria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, so prolonged exposure to them, if you have to take them over a long period of time, can cause degeneration in many of your organs and so forth. I think they're finding this to be a big problem. If you don't take enough, uh, the bacteria can mutate and be resistant to it later. Mm -hmm. So, yes, they're all correct. <laughs> and uh, there's another adverse effect that none of you mentioned, which I'll get later to in my talk. But I want to first talk about antibiotic resistance, since it is still important, and uh, it's a result of overuse of antibiotics and misuse. So also don't mind my drawings. But uh, so here is a uh, group of bacteria that's causing a bacterial infection in someone. So we have seven normal bacteria and one mutated one. So this person will most likely take antibiotics to get rid of the infection. So what will happen is these seven normal bacteria will then be dead, and the one mutated one will stay alive because it's mutated and it has become resistant. So what happens afterwards is now these bacteria are all gone, and this one mutated bacteria will have a bunch of space and resources to reproduce and spread out as much as it wants, and then you'll end up with something like this. So this person will most likely still have this bacterial infection, except this time it will have a bunch of mutated bacteria that's resistant to the antibiotic, and ultimately this person will probably die unless, unless they receive antibiotics that will be able to kill this mutated bacteria. So, on that happy note, <laughs> I want to talk about the other adverse uh, effect, which is the effect of antibiotics on your gut flora. So, you may be wondering, what your gut flora is. So basically, your gut flora is the microorganisms that reside within your gut. Um, so here is your digestive tract, at least that's what it's supposed to be. Um, and the green dots represent the microbes that are in there. So I actually came upon this idea uh, when reading the book to, for this TED talk, which was called Missing Microbes, How the Overuse of Antibiotics is Fueling Our Modern Plagues. Uh, which was written by Martin J. Blazer, who is currently the director of the Human Microbiome Program at New York University. So you may be wondering now, what are these modern plagues? And just to name a few, uh, there's acid reflux, obesity, and asthma. So you sort of get the point. Um, but what Blazer proposes is that the disappearance of this gut flora is correlated to the onset of these sort of modern plagues as he does them. Uh, and of course, antibiotics are a cause of this disappearance. So antibiotics in nature aren't very selective in uh, killing what they're aiming to kill, unlike viruses. Uh, so they will usually affect a wide range of bacteria, and in doing so, they wash through. So what 
Uh, so what Blazer is saying is that the massive quantities that we've been of antibiotics that we've been using in the last century, they have skyrocketed and not only washed out the bacteria that's causing the infections, but they've also washed out the good bacteria, like the gut flora that resides within you. So, as I previously mentioned, um, these sort of this gut flora is um, like positive for preventing these sort of modern plagues. And so what is the importance of that? Like they, the short answer is they protect you and the long answer is a bit more complicated than that. So in order to make this a bit more clear, I would like to talk about one specific gut microbe, which is called Helicobacter pylori, or H. pylori for short. So basically, H. pylori resides within your stomach. So this is your stomach, so yes. Um, and basically, within, if, the, if your stomach has H. pylori in it, the tra uh, there's a flap here that prevents stomach acid from going into your esophagus. Um, without H. pylori, uh, this flap will not completely close and some of your stomach acid will be able to go up into your esophagus and this will eventually cause scarring and lead to a burning sensation and this scar tissue will also, uh, can also lead to cancer in your esophagus. So here's what a normal esophagus might look like and after chronic acid reflux, it could look something like this. So, so basically what I'm saying is that it's protecting you against this sort of acid reflux. But it turns out that the protection that it provided was lost due to the use of antibiotics. Because at the time, uh, when H. pylori was first found, it was correlated positive with the onset of ulcers and gastritis. And because of that, it was immediately deemed a pathogen. And uh, there was a mass movement to eradicate, eradicate it. So there was a saying at the time called, uh, the only good Helicobacter pylori is a dead one, uh, so, so that kind of rose. And so what I'm saying, what I'm trying to get across with H. pylori is that even though it is a double-edged sword, the benefits of this gut microbe outweigh the costs. And also the fact that H. pylori is ancient and has lived with, with humans for thousands of years doesn't help that fact. We've been in a symbiotic relationship as, as far as that concerns, but like we've lived with them for so long and now with their disappearance, we're seeing the consequences. So another, so another <laughs> correlation that I want to make with uh, between gut flora and uh, mod the modern plague is obesity. So Blazer also did a study on this and his inspiration for it uh, was the question, why do antibiotics make farm animals bigger and fatter? So here we have a cow that was administered antibiotics, so it's bigger, and here's a cow that has not been administered <laughs> antibiotics. So just to make things like a bit easier to understand, here's a steak that would come from this cow, and here's a steak that would come from this cow. And when choosing which one to eat, you probably want to choose this one because this steak here could be laced with antibiotics, which is ultimately not so great with you. So in order to study this and the correlation between obesity and antibiotics, uh, Blazer did a study using mice. So he split, he had two, two groups of mice. One of them was a control uh, and the other one was administered antibiotics. So the mice that were administered antibiotics at the end of the study didn't actually gain any weight, but they got fatter, literally. Uh, there, was no noticeable uh, there was no noticeable difference, but after a DEXA, DEXA scan, it showed that they were actually 15% fatter. So they had 15% more fat than, on them than the control mice here. So 15% more fat than this mouse. Um, so in order to make sure that in order to make sure that it was actually the gut flora that was affecting this, uh, Blazer decided to take the microbiome of both previous mi mouse groups and put them in a put them in two groups of germ-free mice. So germ-free mice are basically mice that have no microorganisms in them. They're completely sterile. So what Blazer did was he took the microbiome of a mouse that was administered antibiotics and put it in one group of 
germ-free mice, and then he took the microbiome of a mouse that was not administered antibiotics and put it in a different germ-free mouse group, and then he fed them and raised them both in the same way for the same amount of time. And at the end of the study, it showed that the, the mice that were, had the microbiome of a mouse that had antibiotics administered to them, so this one, uh, it showed that they weighed 10% more than the other group, and they're 40% more fatter than the other group. So this study made it clear that antibiotics are affecting our gut flora in a way that is detrimental to us, and it should be something that is of concern. So I'm not saying that antibiotics are bad by any means. In fact, I'm comfortable in saying that they're good and they do work. It's just that the overuse and the misuse of antibiotics is what I'm concerned about. The overuse has led to resistance and other side effects, such as these modern plagues that I've been talking about, and the misuse, such as the use of antibiotics in farm animals like the cows from before, um, has only just added fuel to the fire. I'm also not saying that antibiotics are the only cause of these modern plagues, rather they're just one cause and there could be many other factors that are uh, causing these other sort of modern plagues. And because of this, they should be uh, addressed appropriately, appropriately so and shouldn't just be overlooked completely like they have been for so long. With that in mind, I encourage you all to not just be careful when using antibiotics, but to also educate yourselves on what you put into your body. Uh, and do your own research, and you never know. Maybe someday that research will pay off. Thank you. Yeah.